this evening, I'm happy to say that we've got three Cheltenham Gold Cup winning jockeys to talk you through tomorrow's racing and preview the festival. They've won 126 Cheltenham Festival races between them. So will you give a very warm welcome onto the stage, if we can get them away from their pizza, to Barry Geraghty, Dickie Johnson and Ruby Walsh. Hey boys. I feel a bit Valduna Kinesque sitting here on my stool. Can you, Dickie, can you reach the stool? Are you all right? Just about. Can you get on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, he's swinging his little feet. It's so sweet. Um, great to have you all here. Um, tomorrow looks cracking. Let's get straight into it. We are waiting on the superstar that is Megs Nichols. She's so busy. She's been doing TV at Sandown. She will be joining us, of course, ambassador um, for the great Holland Cooper brand and also rising star of ITV. But let's, boys, let's start off with tomorrow. That's lies, Alice. <laughs> she was in Ireland the last couple of days. Um, don't really know what she was doing in Ireland. We'd have to quiz her and find out. But, okay, I'll, uh, I'll leave that, I'll leave you know, that to you. Know, don't mind sand down my arse. That's where she's been. <laughs> <laughs> really been is the question. What about, uh, let's just, let's reflect on that movie actually, first of all, Ruby. Yeah, I should have charged double. 19, Ruby. 1924, <laughs> what age was he when it all started? Yeah, it sounded way better when I was making it than it was in that movie. <laughs> Jeez, Christ. Jesus, Ruby, desperate, you're a isn't poet, it? you're a poet. No, it's not. Um, I know they need a drama and you need excitement. No, that's not excitement. Uh, dra oh, it's shocking. No, it's great. Yeah, we loved it. But I mean, the Gold Cup for you, all winners, and, and they're defining moments in your careers, Ruby. Definitely, and we were all lucky to have won it twice, I think. Definitely twice, did you know win it three times? Just twice. Twice, yeah. <laughs> in we were all, dreams, yeah. 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 We were all lucky enough to, to win it twice. And look, the festival is, is a wonderful meeting, but there is something very different about winning a Gold Cup. The reception a Gold Cup winner gets, the crowd, the intensity, the atmosphere, it all changes for the Gold Cup. And it is the pinnacle of the sport, but it is a moment that you'll never forget. And yeah, I can remember the two of them so well, but to win a Gold Cup is so different to winning any other race at a festival. That's what I thought. There's a different feel on the Friday. From the moment you walk in the gate on Friday, it's Gold Cup day. You know, champion hurdle, champion chase, stairs hurdle, they're big days, big races, they're brilliant. But when you walk in there on Friday, it's just, it's a different energy. It is, and I, I remember being there for the first time in 96 when Imperial Call won it. I had no ride, it was only there as a spectator. 95, maybe 96, whatever year it was, but thinking like that you can, I'll get in the stand and watch any race. And I could until the Gold Cup came along. I couldn't even get into the grandstand to watch it. It was just, people came out of, I don't know where, I don't know where these people had come from to watch the Gold Cup, but that's the, the magnitude of it. And it is a, a very special race. And Dickie, for you, two very, uh, two different ends, it sort of bookmarked your career almost. When you first won it, do you think, oh, this is easy? Well, I did, yeah. I, I thought, you yeah, know, it's quite nice. You can win the Gold Cup. Yeah, having a good night down the pub. It'll it happen again in a couple of years' time. Yeah, 18 years later, it, uh, it, it did happen, but it took, took a while. But, um, but no, I think it, it, it is. It's, it's a Gold Cup really, you know, in a career, a, you know, if you can tell someone you won a Gold Cup, it really makes a huge difference to, huge, huge difference to you know, how, how your career, career, you know, finished. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this beautiful little cup at the back is the actual Cheltenham Gold Cup. And it's an amazing story. There were... This was found um, in a vault, and Cheltenham Racecourse brought it back. It's the original Gold Cup. I am just a fat mother of four and have never won the Gold Cup. These boys, obviously, have won six between them, and that means that they are actually allowed to pick that cup up. I'm not even allowed to touch it unless you've won the Gold Cup. You can't actually pick it up, can you? That's the rules. That's the rule, Alice. That's the rule. <laughs> well, look at there it is, and, it, and and look at it. It's so beautiful, as it's so small, but it's so perfect. We'll, Let's take, we'll take it home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to tomorrow because how many clues will we get tomorrow? I mean, tomorrow on its own, forget the festival, is a cracking day's racing. Starting off with the juvenile hurdle, which gets us underway, um, and we've got a we've got an Ascot Royal Ascot winner running at Cheltenham. Yeah, Burdett Road won at Royal Ascot, and um, very keen going horse. Uh, he won in Huntingdon, then first in over Hurdles. He won in Cheltenham on his second run. And just for me, he overcame an awful lot in Cheltenham. Um, Harry Cobden was brilliant on him. He dropped him right out. You know, he was, he was anxious to get him settled, get him jumping. His jumping improved in the second half of the race. But even from the second half, he had a lot of ground to make up. The runner-up might be an amazing horse, but he did win at the next Cheltenham meeting. 
Um, but I just thought he overcame a lot to get there and he won easy. Sergina would be his danger, who looks like he will improve a lot for the experience in Kempton. But I just think Burdett Road has, has an awful lot of class and, and still has more improvement to, to come, I think, maybe. Boys, we've got a lot to get through, but you two, are you opposing the favourite or are you with the favourite? No, I wouldn't oppose him. I think he's a very good horse, but he, 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 you know, he needs to learn to settle. Okay. So then we move on to a novice's handicap chase. Now, I was struggling with this one. Ruby. Oh, Jeannie's destiny will win. Oh, um, that's good. Top way. Uh, it will. It's a change in the programme. It's a novice handicap chase. He's a graded horse running in a novice handicap. He's not overly highly rated. Paul Nicholas thinks he'd have a chance in the Turner's novice chase on the Thursday of the festival. If he's going to have a chance in that race, he will win a novice handicap chase. Stage star won the race last year and went on to win the Turner's. So, yeah, I think Jeannie's, Jeannie's Destiny will win. And he's a much better price than Burdett Road. Jeannie's Destiny is 3 to 1, 100 to 30 if you shop around. Burdett Road is odds on. I'd be more inclined to push you towards Jeannie's Destiny in the second than Burdett Road in the first. At 115, Dickie, we've got another handicap, and Il Rodoto just missed out under Bryony Frost last time. We've got a jockey change today, tomorrow, in Harry Cobden. He will get an easier lead, will he, tomorrow? Because he looks like the main pace. Yeah, and I think it's probably a slightly less competitive race, and I think Harry Cobden, after the last day, will probably just you know, try and conserve a little bit more. But, you know, he, he did all but win last time. Um, he has to come here with a great chance. Horses that run well at Cheltenham tend to come back and run really well Time after time, um, Paul Nichols, um, obviously Ruby knows better than anybody else, but he, he's a brilliant trainer at getting these horses to perform on the day, and he knows the right horse to bring for these races. So I think yeah, he, he, he goes there, fingers crossed he can go one better than last time. Mm. He's got five pounds extra though, Barry, tomorrow. Yeah, well, he was the one I, I, I would like as well. Um, it's a competitive race, it's an open race, but you know, they're nine lengths clear of the third. Like, that's, that's, that's strong. So what about the Cotswold chase? And you know Paul Nichols better than anyone. I was surprised, were you, to see him pop Stay Away Faye, who's a very good novice, but only had two runs over fences, in the Cotswold chase, up against horses like Royal Pagai. I was too, yeah. Um, I know the owners have dreams, maybe, of him being a Gold Cup horse at seven years of age. Maybe he's the right age to be having a go at a Gold Cup. but. He has such little experience. Two runs over fences. He was very workmanlike at Exeter. He was better at Sandown. But I think it's a brave step. I think it's more the owners wanting to go this road maybe than Paul. Um, that's how it reads. I'm not party anymore to what goes on in the office in Ditch Heat. But um, it reads like the owners wanted to have a go at this race. To me, if you're an owner, you're perfectly entitled to your say. But... None of us buy a dog to bark ourselves. So if you're paying a racehorse trainer, you should let him train the horse. Um, right, that's my takeaway. That's my takeaway. <laughs> None of us buy a dog to bark ourselves. It's got to be. You will say that again. You will. And I, if, if, if Paul is happy to be going there, that's fine. But it wouldn't be a traditional route for Paul Nichols to go. Um, and therefore, I will go against Stay Away Faye. I like the outsider, a horse of Willie Mullins is called Il Capadano, or Capadano, not Il anything. He's just Capadano. Um, I thought he ran really well at uh, Leperstown on Christmas in the Savile's chase. He finished third behind Gallop and the Champ. He almost caught Jerry Colomb. I think a reproduction of that form will be good enough. Um, I think that's all right. Gino was good in Newbury. He could run well. I'd be against the favourites here. I'd be going to the outside. And I think Capadano, with Paul Townend on board, will have improved enough from Leperstown to win tomorrow. That's all right. Gino showed huge improvement for the step up in trip in that Coral Cup. That was a handicap. This is his first time really finding out how good he is, Dickie, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I, I still think that, that was sort of his, his big day, really. Um, I think he's still got to improve. I... Oh, here she is! Go. Oh, here she is! <laughs> Better late than never. Hey, Butte, squash on the end, don't fall off the stage. They'll probably push me off. <laughs> but, yeah, there you go. Apparently, we've got to ask you what you've been doing in Ireland. Uh, I went for a tour around Willie's. Ruby showed me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Mullins, not touring Willie's, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Fuck you. Is that, I, I <laughs> nodding. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Oh, at least someone's bringing me entertainment for us. Uh, anyway, carry on. So we... Why are you blushing? <laughs> I've got half an hour in a family show. This is a family show. You have literally... We were, we were talking very seriously racing. Well, I'm moving back as well. Don't, 
Don't put me on show. Bloody just be careful. Right? You're quite close to the edge there, Poppet. Don't fall off. Right. We've oh just been God. questioning Dad's decision to run Stay Away Fay. Lovely novice up in against the big boys. Talk us through it. Love it. Why not? It's like what we want for National Hunt Racing, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, if he's going to be a Gold Cup contender next year, then he's going to have to step it up at some point. I suppose Dad's probably fed up of running in like two, three runner races where he doesn't get much of a gallop. And he's going to get that tomorrow. And if he's going to be good enough to be winning at the grade one level against Novice Company again um, come March, then he'll put up a big performance. Do you think he can win? I hope so, because I think he's so talented. And I think that we'll see a better horse with a better pace tomorrow. Um, his jumping touch would have been very good. Um, and can he beat Royal Pagai? Having beaten Brave Man's Game, I'm not sure. But I think Stay Away Faye's got a big engine, so I'm going to remain faithful. Mm, yeah, you got that form line with Brave Man's Game. What, what's your take on this? I agree with Ruby on the outsiders. Um, Royal Pagai beat Brave Man's Game on soft ground. His best form is on soft ground. It's going to be better than that tomorrow. Um, Stay away, Faye. It's a big call stepping up against strong opposition. So I'll be with Ruby on the outsiders. I like uh, That's All Right, Gino. Very impressive in Newbury. Has recent form. You know, you, you, you're hoping Capanana is going to improve for that run. And maybe he will. And he has a big chance. But the horse with recent form winning a top grade handicap last time. That's All Right, Gino. And the ground is ideal for him. Okay. Vicky, your selection in it? Um, well, she. <sighs> Slightly different again. Always in Europe, I thought if he if he can forget his runs this year, but if he can go back to last year's form, um, I don't think he'll mind the slightly better ground and a sm smaller field if he gets in a bit of a rhythm. Um, I think it's a very open contest. Um, but yeah, I thought always in Europe, if he comes back to form, I think he's you know he's he's got a big chance. I know he'd suit you, right? That always in your front runner, but he jumps like his four legs are tied together. <laughs> you hold him to the next trap and just keep kicking. Oh, It'd be geez. fine. Like it'd be my no, idea right. of it. My worst nightmare would be riding a high senor in a chase now. I think it is quite He's a camel. The pace angle. Yeah, but that's, that's Ruby 44, 45 sitting here. Ruby 25 might feel differently. I know if I was riding him. If I had to him tomorrow, I'm, 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 I'm 46 and I wouldn't mind having to go tomorrow. Would you not? <laughs> Fair play. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lead him up. <laughs> if, if we get back to the pace angle in the race, there is quite a lot of pace, isn't there? Because uh, And that could suit, that's all right, Gino. Well, that could suit him, yeah. So you have the real whacker potentially and a high senior are going to take each other on. And that's not going to play to the real whacker strength. So I think that's a negative for him. And he has to step up in what he's done so far this season. Um, yeah, that suits, that's all right, Gino. That suits me. Mm -hmm. Okay, Clarence House. Clarence House, we were supposed to have at Ascot last week. They've managed to reschedule it to this weekend. Um, unfortunately, we don't see El Fabiolo coming over and taking on the great Jambon. Um, so is it, well, you're, you've got the inside line on the JP McManus team. Uh, Jean and Nicky Henderson. Nicky was saying this week it's been very difficult because they had him absolutely popping for last week. And he's a horse that's quite lives on his nerves. Um, what about him for tomorrow? Yeah, so it's, it's not ideal, but he's a little bit older now. He's not what he was when he was a five-year-old as a novice hurdler. So I'd say he's, he's easier to, you know, get him back to where he wants him. The opposition are weak enough. He's one to three, so, you know, he'd have to underperform very badly to get beaten. The only angle, potentially, editor to Jeez, who won the race last year, he beat Edward Stone and he beat an Ergamine. It was a good performance. It's still a bit to find with John Bond. He's been 30 lengths and I think 40 lengths mm. behind him the twice they've met. Um, but he's the only horse who could potentially threaten. Megsy, is it John Bond all the way? Yeah, I, I think let's keep it simple. It is really. Um, obviously, James Bowen on board for the first time. He'll know him well from mm. schooling him and everything at home at Nicky's. Hopefully a nice positive ride. It seems to really suit John Bond. Get into that good jumping rhythm. And he'll be hard to beat. But come March, I'm Timo Fabiolo. I he impressed me last year. I was with him last year, and looking forward to seeing him out next weekend. And I think he's going to be the one that uh, they all have to beat come shout in the March. Just looking at the jockey angle, because um, in case you haven't read it, Nico de Boinville managed to get back from a broken collarbone, but had one ride and um, had to then stand himself down. So young James Bowen gets the chance. It's what all the second jockeys. They don't want to see the first jockey injured, but when yes, they, they do. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's happened. Uh, Dicky for James Bowen, huge, huge opportunity. 
Yeah, huge. But um, I think Nicky Henderson, he's, he's, he's over the last you know, um, few months, he's, he's kept stepped into quite a few of these big rides and done well. So, he, you know, he's taken it all really well. Um, yeah, James would be very excited, but it's, it's a huge ride to get. But yeah, John Bond, he's, he's the best horse in the race. Um, I think she should enjoy it. And it'll suit his riding? Oh, yeah. But he's the most intelligent horse in training, John Bond. He knows Ascot was called off. Uh, last Thursday week. He knows he was peaked to run on Saturday. Um, he now knows the race has been rearranged to this Saturday and he's had to keep his nerves on edge. I mean, he's just the most intelligent horse in the world. He's an incredible racer. Nicky, <laughs> Nick, when you listen to Nicky, that's exactly how... I know, yeah. Like, amazing, I mean, it's it's an unbelievable fairy tale. He should be writing children's books. He's wasted, <laughs> he's wasted as a race horse trainer. The respect, it just oozes out of him, doesn't it? It's so <laughs> wonderful. So what about um, the Unibet hurdle? Um, I'm really looking forward to this. Is it a champion hurdle trial? No. Are you sad that Constitution Hill isn't here since you produced him as a three-year-old and, and pointed out to the lads that, that he was going to be a potential superstar? Did you realise quite how good he was going to be? Not quite how good as, uh, but yeah, I had an idea he was going to be smart, but not that smart. Um, yeah, pity he isn't going to be here tomorrow, but... Um, we look forward to seeing him in March. Uh, as regards the race itself, Lassie Mount, she was brilliant as a juvenile last season. She's late coming to the game this season, uh, but I think that's Willie's plan. Uh, she has Love Envoy to beat, who holds a good level of form, especially in England. She's won most starts. I think she's only been beaten once in England when second to Honeysuckle. Her only other defeats outside of that were in Ireland, so mm. you can put that down to her not travelling. That's a very strong level of form. Um, Lassie Mount needs to be as good as she's meant to be and needs to improve again from what she did last year to beat her. But um, it's probably likely that will be the case. You see, see Lossy Mouth. Mo you watched her working during the week, were you? What did you her? think? Yeah, I was surprised by actually how small she is. She's, um, <laughs> she's diddy, isn't she? To be fair. She's not that big, yeah? Yeah, but um, she looked a million dollars, as always, fit. Um, and I think now the BHA have actually rectified their fuck up which doesn't happen very often and she's now carrying the correct weight which is a positive um it's going to be even harder for the others to give her um you know we're both so if you missed this pounds. today um the conditions of the race uh, meant that uh lossy mouth was allocated a weight but they the, her grade one win was in punchstown which is in may and the bha took it as the following season. She should get half of the penalty that she was given and that weight's been reviewed and, uh, and rectified. But today. normally they don't review these things. So this is a... No, it's good. Slightly it's good, it's a positive. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is a positive and at least it's been rectified, which is a good thing. She's in great form. It's a season starter for her. Um, yeah, and, it, and she should win. We'd, we'd be fairly happy with her. She looks a better filly this year than she was last year. She? And it has been, as, as Barry said, it's been a conscious thing, has it, to, to wait? Yeah, it has. Um, I suppose when you look at juveniles, you go through it every year. And one in nine years, a juvenile will come and win a champion hurdle. I think Catch It was nine years after. Then you had the horse, yeah, the, uh, the Espoir Dallin. Is it? Espoir Dallin, yeah. Espoir Dallin. It, it's, it's one in nine juvenile can, can go forward to be a champion hurdle horse. And I guess when we were looking at the juveniles that we had, we went back and by accident, we looked at the route Qui Viga took. So she ran as a juvenile. She got injured in France. And by in because of an injury, she didn't get to run until February as a five-year-old. Now, that happened by accident. But maybe you look at it and think, well, did the accident show you the way to do it? So it's been done by design. And we'll find out tomorrow if it's been the right route. Um, <clears throat> Dickie, let's move on to the Cleve Hurdle. I mean, what can you say about Paisley Park? He's about as old as you and me. Um, <laughs> no, he, he's not that old. He, <laughs> <laughs> he, well, he's not as old as you, Reeves, no. Um, I look it, but I don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> he's the most amazing horse. I mean, he's the sort of horse that, you know, is why we love the sport, isn't he? Yeah, no, he's brilliant. And, like, I think two years ago, we, we started writing him off saying, well, he's doesn't always want to go and do it and everything else and he, he keeps coming back and and and, and doing it again so the cleave heard last year i think someone on telly said aiden two years ago, a, is it three years ago two years two years ago, years ago aiden aiden coleman should definitely pull his horse up he didn't he, he basically stood at the start for gave everybody 20 lengths and then uh sauntered home and, and won, won easily in the end so um left, left the stairs hardly behind him he should have pulled him up <laughs> <laughs> should have listened to you i know um but i think yeah he's an amazing horse but 
I still think there's there's other horses in the race. I thought Noble Yates, who obviously won a Grand National, I thought he he was a horse that if I was going to ride one in the race, that, that's the one I would want to ride. It's pretty cool, isn't it, having a, a Grand National winner up against a Stayers hurdle winner. And then you've got Dashiell Drasher in there as well. And you've got Champ, of course, as well. There's so many stories and different angles that you can take at it of horses coming up, horses going down, older horses, younger ones coming through. It's brilliant. It's more of the older brigade there. You know, there's not many. Noble Yates is the one that's coming through, potentially. Um, Dashiell Drasher, though, for me, I thought he dictated a steady pace at Ascot, which didn't play to Paisley Park's strengths, but yet Paisley Park was the one who gave Crambo most to do. Um, I just showed it, I thought it showed great well-being in Paisley Park at his age. He's won the race three times before. Um, I think Noble Lates will need to be in his A again to beat Paisley Park. Do you think it's, it's great seeing Tom Bellamy? He seems to, you know, the sort of change and mixing it up. Um, not that Aidan hasn't done a brilliant job on him, but almost with these old horses, just doing, making a little change can sometimes make a big difference. Try and sweeten them up. We've got to do that to these old boys, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but... Yeah, I think it was nice to see Paisley Park travel so well last time because we see so often that he just sort of looks like he really can't be asked. But he actually has been traveling really nicely. Um, Tom's obviously getting a good tune out of him, sort of gutted he couldn't get that grade one on the board. Um, but hopefully it's knocking on the door. I love the route that Noble Yates is taking. Bit of confidence back. Two and a half miles last time, way too sharp. Up and trip again. Um, obviously the pace is not going to be ferocious, no doubt. But... Noble Yates, we've seen him, I know he's a national winner, but with a turn of foot before. Mm. Um, and I just think that he's a very talented horse and some of the others, older, wiser, don't always want to win. So we go from the old brigade to the young brigade and a, a, a really interesting novice hurdle. And I'm so looking forward to seeing this Gidley Park in the paddock because he's a massive, great big raw thing, but he seems very nimble on his feet. And Ruby, you've been looking at this new analysis of um, gaining lengths at fences. And I was really surprised when I looked him up that for a big horse, he's he's really trapping at his hurdles. Yeah, he is. He takes them on. He li he obviously likes jumping. His, his, the stats and the data behind his performance add up. Um, I thought he was probably a fraction workman-like at Newbury when he won. But I'm not sure Harry Fry's horses were really bombing at the time, yet he managed to go and win. I think they're in better form now. And by the last, if you're having a bad day, you could probably double up and get out on him. Mm, yeah, he looks proper, doesn't he? Yeah, I was lucky enough to be at Newbury um, last time, so I've seen him in the flash, and he is a monster. Um, I'd say anything he does over hurdles is a bonus. He looks like a proper strapping chaser for the future. Um, he should you really... sound like be... your dad. I, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I think I'm mad, isn't it? <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Um, no, I think um, I like the way that... Harry's given this horse plenty of time and mm. gradually gone up through the grades and, and hasn't rushed him after winning at Newbury as well. He's mm. had this as the aim. Um, I'd be disappointed to see him beat. Yeah, he's a nice horse. Um, any any opinion on the novice hurdle? Uh, John Joe's horse, Johnny No Who, isn't it? He was third to Captain Teague. Fourth in the uh, Chalo last. Yeah, or two lengths behind Captain Teague, should I say? Yeah, good <clears> run. <throat> um, I would, if you're looking for something to take on the favour with, I thought he might represent the best of the rest. Okay, can I get your nap, Megs, for tomorrow? What's your best bet for these guys tomorrow? Who's going racing tomorrow? <laughs> oh, oh, literally. Come on, you've got, we've got to go to give, sort out some beer money. Stay away, Faye. Ooh. Yeah, she go like in, punch you. Love We've that. got so many short price favourites tomorrow. I know. It's a bit boring. <laughs> but stay away, Faye's not that short price. He is fab at the moment, um, but he's... Fairly sensible. If you want to get on now, then he might be shorter by the morning. It's pretty amazing that he's favourite when you look at what, who he's running against. Ruby? I'm going to give you a Yankee. Uh, four horses. Genie's Destiny. There's 100 to 30 in the 12.40. In the 1.50. Capadano is 13 to 2. 3 o'clock. Noble Yates is 7 to 2. And at 1.50 in Ferry House, Pictures of Home is 16 to 1. That's in or around 200 to 1 if they all collect. So stick to four to me. <laughs> Back to Duncan's to celebrate, I think. Um, Dickie, I... I Ten or each way, it costs you 220 quid. It's he's returning about 20 grand. All right. He's trying to... Dickie's trying to... Which, he's, which bookmaker are you working for? <laughs> <laughs> he literally you could have said any numbers. Them. He could have said any numbers then and we'd all gone, oh, right, amazing. Um, Dickie, 
Uh, yeah, oh, I think Noble Yates tomorrow. I think it, it tell him. I think he's he's the one that for me that yeah, he's not a favourite, but I think he I think he'll win. Barry, there's lots to choose from. Um, there are. There are Paisley Park. <laughs> I do really like uh, Ilvadotto. Oh, nice. Yeah. Seven hundred thousand pounds of prize money on offer tomorrow. Cracking days racing, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. We're just going to have a quick run through of the championship races at the festival. Listen, we're a long way out. Um, Megs, let's start off. Can anything take on Constitution Hill? No. <laughs> no. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wednesday, champion chase. El Fabiolo Jambon. El Fabiolo. I want Jambon to win, but on last year's form, El Fabiolo. El Fabiolo. El Fabiolo. This is really boring. I don't say yes, Jambon. Yeah. No, Jambon, come to see on. There's value in this too if we do the maths as well. Now, it's hard if you were talking to Champion Hurdle, Imperia passes 12 to 1. If you're looking for each way of value, you know, if it's going to be a reasonable price in the day, I wouldn't be backing him anti post each way. But Imperial Pass hmm. can't be out of the first three. If Constitution Hill wasn't to turn up, I think he's good value. Do you actually think, seriously, do you think it's betting without the favourite for the champion hurdle or looking for the each way value? That's probably where we should go. So, yeah. what's your each way value? That's a good shout. Well, you have Imperial Pass. They have got yeah. yours. Dickie? Are you all going in pair of pass uh, now? No, I, 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 I'd be going statement, even a three to one, because he's the only one that, to me, that could even possibly be Constitution Hill. If Constitution Hill happened to have an off day, horses aren't motor cars, so they can have off days. He's the only one that could beat him. And at three to one, you'll nearly get your money back if it doesn't happen. Or at least the forecast for Constitution Hill to win and State Man to finish the record. Or less confusing is all they're going to do with Tricast and Constitution <laughs> <laughs> State Man and Pass. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to Thursday. Um, we're sort of double header there, aren't we, with the Stayers Hurdle and with the Ryanair. Stairs Hurdle. Stairs Hurdle, Tihupu. Um, Irish Point was really good at Leopardstown. It was a slow run race. Tihupu has more age on the side. Irish Point is only six. And in an extreme race like that, for me, Tihupu. Yeah, I think Tihupu, I think they, like Gordon Hayes said, he definitely wasn't going to run after he, if he ran last year. He's better fresh with a big break in between races. So, yeah, he's been trained for the race. And I think we, we look at the Cleve Hill tomorrow. It's, you know, unfortunately, we haven't it's got any, Ireland. So I think, I think we haven't got the strongest stairs over here. So the Irish are, are, are stronger in that front. Uh, the best staying hurdler in Britain is running in the Cotswold Chase tomorrow. He'll break fences in that, <laughs> running back in the stairs hurdle, and at 40 to 1, I fancy a high senior. I could, that is so, I've been thinking that. I've been, because do you remember, what, who was the enormous horse years ago? French Holly. French Holly. He's a French Holly, isn't yeah. he? He is, yeah. His he's, he's feet and his brain don't work in tandem, <laughs> and I think back over hurdles, he'll be much better off. He's got a serious engine. Yeah. R Ruby will tell us more, but um, Monkfish back over hurdles yesterday. He's so, so talented on a going day. and Yeah, but if I tip him for the stairs hurdle, Willie Mullins run him in the Gold Cup. Right. Okay, so. well, you won't, and I will, and then we might be get a bit of counterbalance. But if he stayed over hurdles, and now he's got his confidence up, he could be a decent each-way price. I think he was about 20 to 1. Um, that might be prior to Yeah, him. it was interesting. I heard the team actually talking on Nick Luck's podcast, and they were saying that because he's so fragile, they probably would like to keep him over hurdles because, because actually he's got more chance of... Staying sound and be. Well, he used to jump 12 hurdles in the stairs hurdle. He used to jump Nine. 21 fences yeah. in the goal goal. I think you yeah. told us 20. 22. In Whatever the it is. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> so if you're taking off and landing that amount of times with legs like monkfishes, it adds up. And that's yeah. probably why you would stay over hurdles. The engine's there, though, isn't it? I mean, he's hugely talented and mm. back in winning ways, confidence back up. I just thought that yeah, good might shout. be a bit of each, each way value. You What's your Ryanair pick? I did not. You did. You said I wouldn't be happy with him. Big you did. Out. You're so right. You were riding out that lot. You don't I wasn't. Even know I was what standing I was there. I, do, I don't feel this week went very well in Ireland. So you know, an awful lot. Can truth. we move on to the Ryanair, please? Quick, tell me what your Ryanair selection is. Um, don't overlook stage start to bounce back. Okay. Yeah. Um, personally, don't think you should have ran last time. Um, Did you mention that over the breakfast table? Hey. Yeah, it didn't go down that well. Um, <laughs> sometimes you have to do this thing, and I don't know if it's just with my dad or in general probably with men, where you have to let, make it like their idea. Yeah. Um, but um, That's unfortunately... You have to do with women as well, as a lot of men will boast. <laughs> unfortunately, it wasn't his idea to make him a non-runner, and then afterwards he was like, fuck, I shouldn't have ran. I was like, well... Wow. Um, no, but he, he could just bounce back um, and shouldn't be overlooked. He's talented. 
he goes very well at Cheltenham. And uh, yeah, we'll see a different horse in March. Okay. He could win best turned out stage star after Platinum. Um, <laughs> uh, well, he broke Alaho, so you can't choose him. I was going to tip Envoy Allen anyway. Mm. I think he's the value. I didn't fancy Alaho. He didn't do it for me in the King George. He didn't do it for me in Turles, and he's injured anyway. But um, <laughs> I tip Envoy Allen. It's all hearts, isn't he? <laughs> um, Rich? I'd say if they start, if he can get back to what he was last year at Cheltenham, that, that gives him a what price he is. But I'm he, all about Envoy Allen. Each, each, each way, each, is it each way price? Stay star. What is he? He's about five to one at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it could be in the first three. <laughs> Can you not read the number? Barry. I was really impressed with Band Rouge around Kenton. <laughs> it was far too sharp for him. Uh, he's a winner on Cheltenham before over two miles. Yeah, but if you wanted value and you could potentially buy this horse next week, is Phil Dore, who will be in the dispersal sale for Caldwell Construction. Um, second to Al Fabiolo, second to Dino Blue. He was a smart juvenile. Didn't do amazing over hurdles last season, but his form this season's reading well. He'll enjoy the step up and trip. Um, so I think he's valued about 16 to 1. I've got lots of ladies doing this, so we've got to stop. <laughs> but um, I'm just loving listening to you. Gold Cup. I mean, on last time, Gallop under Sean, he looks impossible to beat. If he gets into a nice jumping rhythm, then he is without a doubt the best horse in the race. Okay. Yep. Gallop under Sean, yep. On last year's form, he is. Um, I thought La Hombre Preserve, um, Venetia's was really That's good. That's Long Presse. Long Presse. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Struggle with English. Struggle with English, French. French. Um, but yeah, I thought he was very good um, last Sunday. And at each way price, yeah, he's, I, I think he'll be in the three if, he, if, if he's okay after Linfield. Yeah, and he improved, didn't he? The whole way through the race, he sort of got yeah, better and I, better. I think, he's, I think he's a very talented horse. Nothing original. Gallop in the champ. Love it, you're all agreeing. We love a favourite, don't we? We love <laughs> a favourite. <laughs> but we're a long way out, and we'll be doing a whole load of Cheltenham previews, so do come along. And actually, Ruby's been talking about the road to Cheltenham since about last August, I think, haven't you? <laughs> June. <laughs> June. 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 June, sorry. I missed the first couple of episodes, sorry. There are the best ones as well. <laughs> Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention and thank you so much, guys. I mean, what a privilege to have uh, such a great panel. And well done, Megs. You made it. Got here eventually. And you added glamour and you lifted the whole thing. So thank you so much for coming, Rubes, Dickie, Barry. Thank you so much.